All right, hey guys. So uh, I wanted to do a talk and uh, talk about what I read this week. I uh, read quite a few books this week, so uh, you know, let's get started. Uh, this is in no particular order. Um, but uh, first off, I read Hellbreak, which is a series from uh, Oni Press by Colin Bunn. And uh, it's been a pretty good series so far. Basically, it's about a par paramilitary organization that goes into hell to uh, rescue the souls of people that have been possessed by demons, apparently. And when you're possessed by a demon, the demon takes over your soul and sends your soul to hell. So now these people go to hell because Lucifer built a stairway to hell when uh, trying to get back to heaven whenever he went to hell. And so now these people use that to go down and gain access and try to steal the souls back uh, for these people. Uh, it's actually been really good. Um, it's Colin Bunn, so uh, you know you know that's going to be good. Uh, Dave Stewart does the coloring on this. So, yeah, really, really enjoying uh, Hellbreak. Next up, uh, one of my favorite things that I'm reading right now, uh, or something that I at least really look forward to, is Nutmeg. Uh, I got Nutmeg number two and three. Uh, Nutmeg is basically a series about these two girls. Uh, there's one girl that is new to the high school that they're in, and uh, this other girl, uh, Saffron, that has basically been getting kicked around by uh, this mean group of girls her whole life. And now she has a friend that wants to try to help her uh, get even with them. And every year they have a big bake sale, which everybody goes out and sells brownies. And uh, this one girl always wins. Actually, I believe her name is Saffron. Saffron always wins because of the fact that her father owns some kind of chocolate company. And they're doing secret uh, experiments to make the chocolate more addictive and so once a year they have to go out and have these bake sales so that people get addicted to their chocolate and eat their chocolate every year um, this issue was really good issue three because they thought that they were gonna make a poison batch of brownies to give to people to make them think that saffron had done it and it turned out that the brownies got everybody high and uh, so everybody wants more of those brownies now. So it was just, it was really cute. Uh, next I read Wayward. Uh, super like this cover. Uh, I didn't end up getting the normal cover, but I like this cover anyway. Uh, finally got to see Rory. I was starting to wonder whether or not Rory was dead. And so it was cool to see her in this. It was, the art in this book is always just amazing. Um. You know, the art, the coloring um, is just amazing. Steve Cummings does a fantastic job. Love, love seeing Rory back. And uh, a little bit more information about what's going on with the cats. And the history of just everything that's going on. And then at the end, you have this this creepy girl that's got the freaking sand spiders all over her. That, oh man, some kind of war is fixing to go down in that. That, uh looks to be amazing but just everything about that book's good every time uh, never disappointed uh, next up I read Outcast um, got a little more information about exactly what's going on with the whole demon position finally kind of got to see the demon um, I've kind of believed this whole time that our main character for some reason can't be possessed by the demons and that's why they don't like him, and that's why he's the outcast. But uh, he finally kind of figured out how to use his power a little better in this. And like I say, we finally got to see, uh, finally got to see the black mass. As uh, you can't really see that, but uh, it kind of looks like supernatural whenever they uh, get a demon out of a body or whatever. Uh, but yeah, outcast number eight or outcast number nine. Uh, really good finally getting some story in that so you know can't wait to see where that's going Pisces con continues to be confusing um, more Vietnam stuff 
some crazy trippy stuff that was going on. Um, I still believe that he's in space. At least that's the premise of it all. Is that he's supposed to be in space. Maybe he's in cryo sleep. And all of this stuff that's going on in the book. Is all part of his cryo sleep. I'm not really sure. But uh, yeah. Super confusing book. Uh, it's got really really nice art on it. And uh, you know. So far so good with this book. Um, I'm going to continue picking it up. Because well. I. Uh, I like Curtis Weeby a lot, and Tambra Bonneman's art is, uh, I'm going to pick up anything she does, so. Suiciders number four, uh, I keep trying to quit Suiciders, but then I read an issue and it sucks me back in. It's one of the prettiest comics out there, uh, great action. Uh, this issue, we finally got a little bit of actual action action that's going on, um, our main gladi our main gladiator kind of took an ass whooping and that's a little unexpected because that's not the way things are supposed to work out but um, you know just uh, yeah a lot of ass kicking um, a lot of this reporter most people are trying to get into LA this guy is trying to get out of LA for some reason the reporter because he saw some things he shouldn't have and he's afraid he's gonna get killed so yeah, real good mystery going on with a backdrop of like uh, uh, arena fights and stuff, which is, you know, that, that book's just really good. Um, read Alan Moore's new book, Providence, which is, um, basic gist of this book is that there's a reporter, it's a slow news day, uh, he starts talking about this book that had been written like 30 or 40 years ago, that when people read the book they killed themselves or they killed other people and he wants to go investigate it so he goes and he talks to uh, this old man who is um, one of the only people that has done a book on um, on this French book that makes people kill themselves and uh, yeah it's a bunch of dialogue back and forth going on with with all of that and then there's a big surprise twist at the end that I didn't fully, didn't fully comprehend what exactly was going on. And then as always in a lot of, uh, a lot of Alan Moore stuff, there's a little backstory here of what's going on with the, uh, with the actual book and all. But all in all, uh, really good. Um, art on it was really good. Story was super solid. Uh, I read Effigy. <coughs> this book, um... Apparently, there is some kind of, <laughs> I guess, Catholic hit squad that goes around and is trying to kill people that um, have this, uh, the devil's hypnosis or something like that. And uh, so, somehow our characters have gotten caught up in that. Um, this issue, uh, you know, she finally kind of stands up to her mom and tells her, you know, that it's her mom's dream that she wanted to be an actress, not hers. Uh, the girl that's impersonating her, uh, the, uh, the girl boy, the transsexual guy that's impersonating her, uh, winds up doing something that is a real... Uh, a real game changer at the end. Uh, this is part five of the game game changer storyline, so I'm assuming that that's going to be over pretty soon, and we can see where that story is going to go in the future. Because I'm all in all, I'm enjoying FG. Uh, it's a really really twisted story that is put into a story that is supposed to make sense, and it's pretty to look at. Um, I read Invisible Invisible Republic number three. Uh, this book continues to be better and better um, every issue. I like how each issue is filling in gaps that we didn't really get last issue and then the next issue kind of gives us other gaps but that it's all just kind of melded into this one really really good story th um, that's going on and I hope to not find out that this is going to be a limited. It has got to be an ongoing. It's only a two, uh, two ninety nine book from Image so, uh, you know, I mean, do yourself a favor if you're not reading Invisible Republic. It's on 
issue three now, so uh, I'll be able to get a trade pretty soon on that. And then uh, last, uh, I read the first three issues of Secret Wars. Um, really, really like uh, the uh, the zero issue that was in the free comic book day thing. Uh, I really, I heard some people talking about that they didn't really care much for the uh, Secret Wars number one, but I really liked it because I'm real big into Future Foundation and, uh, uh, you know, Hitman's Run on Fantastic Four and all that type of thing is uh, really enjoyable to me. Uh, issue two uh, focused a lot ab around this whole religion of Doctor Doom thing, which was pretty cool with his, like, army of Thors and uh, his uh, Sarlacc pit or whatever it is that he throws people into. Um, not really sure, but uh, it's a badass scene where he's like uh, uh, slicing a venom in half. But uh, yeah, so far Secret Wars uh, 1, 2, and 3, I really, really enjoyed a lot more than I enjoyed uh, the Convergence story. Um, I also picked up Old Man Logan. And I guess I'm going to have to look into what the whole battle world thing is and uh, some of the side stories that are going on with Secret Wars and check some of those out. But uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to get off here and uh, get around to reading some comics and I will talk to y'all later.